Yeah. So like on the lighting stuff, especially since you guys mess with it. Um, dude, I spent 45 bucks on this like shitty galaxy light for like a kid's bedroom. Yeah. It's the best. It's the coolest. <laughs> I have one too. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> Why is that so good? I'm like, oh, this is, this is a perfect purchase for $45. <laughs> <laughs> I like I want to get more like of them. $12. Like yeah. this like bottom tier. Like, yeah. Yeah. Amazon Prime. So now I wonder like how good are the good ones? Probably amazing. Right? I had to guess. They're probably Dude, really I, I want to find one that's essentially like, since our, our walls are all white and ceilings white and everything like that. If I could find like a decent HD projector mm. that would shoot like an actual night sky image with like, you know, the Milky Way galaxy and everything up on the ceiling, yeah. that would be sick. That would be so sick. That's but I'm not sure the, the amount of, yeah, I'm not sure if it's the amount of pain in the ass is worth it though. Like, is it that much better than what I currently have going? <laughs> yeah, but then you have a projector too. Multiple yeah, purpose. I suppose. I suppose just what I need. So how's things, man? Things are fine. <laughs> Nothing is things like are fine. great for anybody, I don't think. No, no. I just, uh, I know I know with you guys, especially the handful of other like Olympic athletes I talk to that, whew, like what a weirdness of, is it just going to be canceled and then like fuck it, wait four years or is it? Literally no, like it could, I think it's like 50-50 at this point like they're saying it's still 50 50 yeah yeah but i like i don't even i don't know i don't know what i think i'm like i don't want to like fully believe it's happening and get all excited but i also like don't want to train thinking like oh this is just going to get canceled anyway no you you can't right you you can't you can't train with that type of mindset at all and uh like i remember where were we we were out in uh, Salt Lake City, and uh, like Flex Lewis happened to be there. He's kind of down your neck of the woods, right? Like Florida. Where where in Florida are you? I'm in Orlando right now. Okay, he's in Boca. Okay, so a couple hours south. Yeah. Then. Um, was talking to him, and like he's he's gearing up because the Olympia is this year in December, and so it was like one of those like, is it happening? Is it not happening? And he's like, yo, there's not a middle ground to me committing to try to get on stage to win that show. Like like for yeah. me. If we've made that decision in May, like I have to fully believe that's happening in December. Yeah. And well, because like y- you can't half-ass it and just wait and see. Because by the time you know, it'll be way too late. Way too late. I mean, luckily you'd want to train anyway. Yeah. But it's a different impetus. With, I mean, are you stoked to have the extra time, or are you were you ready to go? I was hundred percent ready. Fuck like, yeah. Like. <laughs> The extra time, I guess, will help because I had to go up three weight classes. So any extra time on that end will help me because I'm still 11 kilos under body weight. Yo, that's a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, um, (laughs) That's fucking exciting. But like, I just need to be the bare, bare minimum. So it was never our goal to gain that many kilos. I I gained eight kilos from where we started, which I was like- That's rad. Yeah, it was a lot of work, <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure, right? It, like, what a different mindset, too. Yeah, but like the extra time will probably be a good thing, but also it's hard to be like to know that you're going to be in the same or better shape, be injury free. Yeah, like all of there's so much that can happen in a year. Oh, the Olympics are gnarly. Like, um, I'm, I don't know. Have you watched a uh, Way to Gold? Mm-mm. Okay, it's a uh, Michael Phelps documentary about coming out of the Olympics. Uh, and kind of like this downturn that comes afterwards with, with athletes. And um, one of the the main people on there was a former teammate of mine, uh, Lolo Jones. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, seeing, seeing her story in the way, like I remember watching that Olympics and like just fucking rooting for it. Right. Like this is someone I've known. I got to go to school with and was on my team all five years at LSU. And man, like she's won the world championship. She's the best runner going into it. And she's in the finals and like clips a hurdle and takes seventh instead of was it was a length and a half out front, like fucking had it. And then that feeling of like, right. And so like trying to compare that to other sports to people, I'm like, you don't fucking get it. Like every time she's ever laced her shoes up was for that 12 seconds of perfection. Yeah. And then you don't get to try again. No. Like that gave me like I have full. It hurts. Bumps. It fucking <laughs> that, hurts, dude. That, 
has to be so bad. No, my athletic career will never have that moment. Right. And like that single fucking moment that now or never. And the Olympics are that and people don't get it. I, yeah, I agree. They're just like, it's just like another meet, another world, which it's just, it's not the same. No, it's not anywhere close. It's, there's so much more gravity to it. And then it, it's not like you're competing in your backyard. No. It's going to another country. And, and it's also, it's not like it's set up to be your best day. It's like they're running the fucking Olympics. <laughs> you guys getting to lift is just trying to keep things moving. Yeah. Like for them, you know, just as a, like running a big function like that, like they're for sure not making it harder for them to make sure it's the best chance of competition for you guys. Oh yeah. It's just, it's just a ton. There's so much to deal with in that, at that level. Yeah. I mean, I went to, cause I was the alternate last Olympics. So they flew me out and they called it like, the Olympic experience and I was an experiencer and so I basically I didn't get to go in the village or anything but I was there for like three weeks saw everything saw a lot of like the background stuff and it is it's it's I can't, I can't even explain it. it's literally like a whole city yeah for only the Olympics it's, it's insane it's crazy yeah yeah it's it's absolutely bonkers you know everyone I know is on the track and field side for the most part um but man, for me, even even just because I was a track and field guy through college, like the Olympics are still really special to me. Like I'm not the the power lifter who's don't get it or any of that type <laughs> of stuff. Like I'm like, fuck man, it's the Olympics. Yeah. It's it's the best. It's like who can lift the most, who runs the fastest. This is my favorite test of all time. Yeah, and it's it's fun even if you're not a part of it. Like just watching it is yeah. fun. so cool. Yeah, so it's gonna be Tokyo. Mm-hmm. That's pretty rad. Well, Hopefully, allegedly. Well, hopefully, but also with, I'm not sure how aware of the weightlifting recent events you I'm are, not. but okay. So as of this week, there was some major executive board changes, basically booted everybody out that was on track to, cause we're, we're kind of like on the IOC's like shitty side. They don't really <laughs> like the sport of weightlifting. Yeah. Why would they? Yeah. Well, we've been warned so many times, like clean up your act stop hiding drug tests, stop doing this. And then Come on, we've Russia. kind of, yeah, we've kind of like slid by. And like, I think it was a few years ago, we literally had to earn like whether or not we were going to be in the Olympics. So that was like two, three years ago. This year, again, same warning. And they kicked out all the people that were trying to make that happen. And we got a warning or a statement from the IOC that was like, this decision may risk you guys being in the 2024 Olympics and like weightlifting as a whole yes the entire sport is at risk of being removed from the olympics and then the new board is trying to completely change qualification procedures for tokyo to get either banned athletes or athletes that weren't eligible based on our current system in okay so if that happens all of us who've spent the last like three years playing by their rules, doing everything we need to do. It's basically flipped on its ass and it's just like total for total, pure ranking, you go. So it might, it, there's so many things that could happen. And like, I'm not sure if Tokyo is at risk of being pulled because I think we're kind of too far past that. Sure. But the next Olympics, there's a pretty good chance it'll be pulled. That's super weird. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, that's that's a lot, especially then what, there being a three year gap between Olympics. What, you, what was yeah, that there'll mind? be a three year gap between the Olympics yeah. after after this one. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be weird, and like I I wonder too right now, you know, especially with as much as I mean, for the first time, I think really that athletes kind of in your arena have a chance to make a decent living based on social media versus. As before, like, man, if you're chasing the Olympics, like I try to explain that to people, the difference with the Olympics of like weightlifting or, or the track stuff is like, you don't have time to have a real job. Like that's not how it works. Like I understand that with the thing that you're pursuing, you do, but it doesn't, it doesn't work at that level. Like it has to be everything. And a lot of people don't get that. They're like, you just don't want a job. It's like, no like you literally cannot right put any extra time to anything else no and so 
yeah, it, it, it's cool that there's opportunity now through the rest of this that you can share story or coach online or do any of these other things and reach such a different audience. Whereas, I mean, before you'd have just kind of been stuck at the gym with your USAW stipend and trying like hell, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, even the stipend system from when I started, and I'm still, I think I'm like just past what would be considered like new. Mm -hmm. um, but even when I started, our stipend was like, I think I was like the highest level junior getting maybe $200 a month. And like, Fuck. you can't live off of you that. You can't do anything with that. That's so, gas. It's like yeah. gas in your car to get to the gym. And that was like, that was our salary for our job. Fuck. I mean, now it's so much better. And I know they're still working every year to try and bump it up as much as they can. So it's like, it's completely different than even like four years ago. Sure. Yeah. I, fuck man. And then, I mean, you said you, you're going up three weight classes. <laughs> now is that, is that where you think you'll be your strongest or is it strategy wise looking at the depth of, of who's competing in what classes? So it was purely because of the system that was in place for this quad um, it was super confusing and it was all point based, not necessarily right. total. It's, it's so confusing, but you can only have one person per body weight category. Okay. Um, per country. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then maximum four people. So across those four, they have to be Fuck. different. Okay. Yeah. So I, I mean, I basically fucked myself like no other way to put it at the very, very first qualifying period. Um, I, fractured my back <laughs> and herniated a disc that's mellow um, yeah so <laughs> i to be able to come back from that in my current weight class it's so competitive it just wasn't possible sure so we had to look at it and be okay you could either go down 20 pounds or you could go up 30 we're like up, up 30 <laughs> sounds more fun all uh, the well, time. <laughs> at least going up i know i'm my total is not going to go down at all no like it, you, that's exactly something. right something so we went that way and you just had to physically weigh in twice at that body weight. So the category is 87. I had to weigh 81.01 .01 was the bare, bare minimum. Because you can't be too low. Too low. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't just be like, oh, I'm in that weight class. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm technically probably competing against girls that cut from 90 to 92-ish kilos. Yeah. And then I'm like pound in two liters of water to try to get to on the scale <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, have, I have eight pounds of water actually in me <laughs> yeah that's what we had to do for all of them but like if that's my ticket to the olympics and obviously that's what i'm going to do yeah of course right and then i mean i i think it's such a smart athletic decision as well to realize that i mean dropping the weight to chase the lower weight class is not going to help any of the injury healing or anything like going into a caloric deficit while trying to heal from a major injury is a fucking bad idea yeah that's exactly what i said i said if we drop down i can almost guarantee you this is my absolute last quad i yep. will not go for any more after that so up i mean it honestly it worked out amazing like i'm definitely the strongest i've ever been makes sense and like i think it was a great decision dude i i tell people this all the time and like i think a lot of people with weight classes especially powerlifting or anything else get caught in being in that class and, and that makes sense but I'm bummed out as like a strength athlete who did strongman and Highland Games who like we didn't have weight restrictions. Like the, I think strongman's lightweight was 231 and I was 290. So that's not really a concern. And then yeah. Highland Games is like you're either above or below 200 pounds. That's that's the line. <laughs> and so um, so like, man, it, it I've always wanted just everyone to have at least a stretch in their athletic career where it's like, how strong can I be and not concerned with the scale? Yeah. And like, it's a fun time. You're like, Oh shit. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Like it's hard because I'm not one that's an easy gainer. Like it takes a lot to gain, but like that being said, once I like started gaining, it's like, Oh, a little PR here. Right. A little PR there. Like every day. Caloric surplus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sleep more caloric surplus. That's a fucking way to go. <laughs> yeah. It's the best. Um, Anything like nutrition wise, have you tried to keep it pretty clean or is it mm -hmm. some days you're just like, I, I got to have calories. So initially, because I had to gain relatively quickly, like end, end of worlds last year was like October. I had to be that 81. So I was 71 oh, wow. at worlds in October. Right. I had to be 81 in January. Um, 
So for that, I followed, because I use RP strength, mm -hmm. um, I followed their templates, put me on like absolute maximum massing. And then they were like, okay, eat all of this and then eat whatever you can on top of it. So if you at any point feel like you could eat more, just eat, eat more. Just get yeah. more calories in. Yeah. And they're like, make shakes. So I drank like probably close to 2000 calories a day on yeah. top of everything. So that was like the first little bit, but now like it's all clean stuff. Cause I just feel shitty eating. Of things. course. Yeah, of course. So, yeah. So now that it's like kind of slowed down, I actually did like a little bit of a cut. Like I didn't let myself lose more than like a kilo, kilo and a half, but just to give my body like <laughs> a little bit of a break. Sure. Just, just um, to hold the maintenance for a minute to let metabolism yeah. settle. Yeah. And then we'll bump it back up as we get closer again. So hopefully it'll be lean mass and not just like, fluffing up at the same time mass still moves mass man it, it still fucking works as work. <laughs> you know like i knew i knew me throwing right like that like just because of the implements way what they do and spinning and throwing and doing that like there's just certain amount of sand you kind of need to have in your pockets to keep you against the ground mm -hmm. and whether you can put it on good or bad or not you gotta have it yeah and so I think, you know like for lifting like i i definitely feel slower when I'm bigger, but like squatting, squatting, pulling, pressing feels amazing at all times when you're bigger. Right. But as far as the actual Olympic lifts, like I think there needs to be some sort of like leaner mass. Cause that's just what I'm used to moving at. So having not being like gaining 10 kilos of just pure McDonald's or whatever. No, it's never um, good to just memory foam mattress your body. It's, yeah. not, it's, <laughs> not, it's not the plan for, <clears throat> you know, for, for good consistent size stuff. Uh, yeah. Now, along those lines and like, you know, man, that's, that's a big weight jump is 11 pounds or even what, 22 total <laughs> that you're trying to make the 11 kilos to, yeah, I mean, yeah, that now <laughs> as, as the weights continue to go up, are you noticing like leverage changes within the lifts of, of. Like I feel out of place, but it doesn't feel wrong. Yeah. So like, <clears throat> sorry, I'm choking on my coffee. Um, it's okay. I, Every time I feel like a really qualified athlete, I'm like, oh, cool. I almost died on my own spit today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had to compete like three months into my initial gain and I totally bombed, like didn't make a single fucking lift. Okay. Um, and I was like, I literally, I did my first snatch and I like, had it overhead and then it just wasn't there and I walked off stage I was like what's like what is happening what and then just the happened one, yeah and like it felt so easy and moved so much faster but like just the awareness was not there yet because right I mean, <clears throat> heavy weight doesn't feel that heavy anymore and you're used yeah. to it being like okay this is like third attempt this is really big and then it's your opener and you're like what the fuck is going on so that yeah, there it's... was like a really big adjustment period well, it's the mental hurdle to the, to the weight on the bar. Mm -hmm. Like I remember like how many, like, fuck man. I remember the little bit of weightlifting I was doing, um, you know, having those days where like, I knew what 190 kilos looks like. And then it's like, I could trick myself if I loaded it on the bar differently. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. my brain doesn't recognize it as the same challenge. <laughs> it's like, yeah. so we'll just use different plates and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, you know, and then, and then from there, man, it, you just, some days you're just like, well, I didn't know what that was. I just gave it hell. Yeah. It's ripped. Yeah. So yeah, fuck man. That's, that's super exciting. So now at least you've got time. Mm -hmm. At least rushing to get that done this summer would have been a really trick with, with the injury. Yeah. I feel like, um, <clears throat> right around like probably April is when I really felt completely comfortable again. So like, there was enough time and I competed like a couple weeks after the Olympics would have happened and almost had like a 10 kilo total PR. Oh, shit, yeah. And like, like I was, I was ready, but Fuck yeah, of course. I'll be ready in a year, I guess. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine you will be. Yeah. You have been thus far. I don't see any reason you wouldn't, you know, yeah. that's, that's part of that. On wood. Yeah. And man, that's one of those things that like, I, I love competing cause I love, winning and doing well and seeing what I'm capable of. Right. But man, it's those lessons from that stuff that carry on 
to everything else, like with what business is or any of these type of things that I think about people miss out with this as much as we deal with anxiety and, you know, people's own emotions about their own bullshit. It's man, there's something that comes from the confidence in you knowing that you perform when it fucking counts. Yeah. You know, like there's nothing that matches that feeling. No. And you get to bring it everywhere with you. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's those moments of like, maybe I'm not totally prepared for this, but I'll be okay. (laughs) Those are the best ones when you feel like that going in and then you actually pull it off and you're like, Okay. Hell, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Instead of letting it run wild, right? Because there's so many things that aren't under your control, especially at the Olympic level. Yeah. You know, it's one thing to go to a local meet and they, you know, that people want you to do well, that it's kind of things <laughs> yeah. get curated a little bit, right? Or yeah. a good heavy training day, you know, your own music, your own environment, everyone's cheering and everyone's stoked. And it is different walking into those rooms of, of, they're putting on the Olympics. I need to be part of whatever this yeah. insanity is. Well, and like, I know, I don't know if it's, it's probably every sport, but I know a lot of weightlifters are very like superstitious in particular. Like I have to wear this. I have to eat <laughs> exactly three meatballs after weigh-ins and like this and that. And I literally, like, I'm not like that anymore, but I cannot imagine going to the Olympics and like one of your 10 rituals doesn't play out and you're like, no days ruined. I can't, I can't go on. No. And I mean, and it's weird. Cause I'm that way too. Like there are definitely some rituals that I had, but I didn't look at them as a, I need this to happen to succeed. Yeah. I tried to look at them as this worked before <laughs> I'm going to do it again. And that's one less thing I need to think about. Yep. That's exactly how I am. You know, not the dependent on, Like, if I don't do this, I'm fucked. Yeah. You know? Like, I went to, I think it was Poland for some world, and they lost all of my luggage. So I literally had a backpack with my singlet, my shoes, and my belt, and that's all I had. That's a veteran move, though, Maddie. That's a veteran move, the fact that you put the shit that you need to compete in the carry-on. They, t- they told us, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. And then that happened, and I was like, all right, you guys. Dude, you all guys the years I right. traveled with Highland Games, my kilt was in my care. Like, I had my kilt. Yes. At least I have that. <laughs> like, I could yeah. borrow cleats or shoes. I could go find a store, but I can't buy a kilt. No. I, like, I think I even started packing, like, a couple pairs of underwear, a couple pairs of socks. Yeah. Just, like, I could survive, like, three days off yeah. my backpack and get through a competition just in case anything happens. Right. I'll be ratty as fuck <laughs> by, by the time we're done. But, you know, yeah. I'm not – I'm not. I don't have to add in a weird stress of landing on the ground in a foreign country and being like, oh, I need to find weightlifting shoes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <Fuck. laughs> I need to borrow your knee sleeves. Right. So have you been in, in Florida forever? Yeah. So I was born in Apopka, Florida, which is like probably like 30 minutes from here. Okay. So really tiny. Well, it's not so tiny anymore, but it is definitely more like small town, whereas Orlando is kind of Yeah, like Orlando's big. big time tourist, mm-hmm. Disney and fucking everything. So I Thank God I'm, I'm far from that. I'm like the other side of Orlando. Okay, good. So, that yeah, all I seems like a real there. disaster to me. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Kids getting eaten by alligators and fucking and, I mean, and tons of people at Disney. That's just not my cup of tea. We do have Gatorland, which Gatorland? Is just it's literally just alligators. There's hundreds of alligators. So <laughs> I grew go. up I, I grew up trapping alligators. Like we did that, like the full swamp people thing, like uh oh. growing up. So I've dealt with many of alligators. Oh, I see a kitty behind you. Yeah, they're they're coming and going. That's what they do. Mine will wander in at some point and probably yell at us. Yeah, that's why I had uh, to keep the door open or they would be like, Wow, yeah, what's in here? <laughs> God, you can't, how dare you? <laughs> yeah. Dude, we've, uh, so we've got a cat door on the basement where like litter boxes are down into the basement. And um, we've been trying to block them into the basement at night. And so like I took, the cat door is like a round hole. So I took one of the like Sorenex center mass bells I have, which looks like a cannonball. Yeah. And I put a 35 pound in front of the door and they fucking moved it this morning. <laughs> I'm like, how? <laughs> how is this possible? They get where they want when I'm telling you, they're made of liquid. It's not fair. They, they don't are. have bones. They don't ever help. They don't pay any bills. <laughs> nope. Fucking useless. Fucking freeloaders. <laughs> fucking freeloaders, man. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I've, man, Florida's been fun. Like uh, getting down there where. 
um, you know, Steffi and them are out at hybrid and then you've got Tony uh, with um, real world tactical was down there. Ben packs out that way in Tampa. And then, no, nah, and then they yeah, have flex and those folks are in Boca. So got, got plenty of people lifting down there. It's yeah, also Florida warm all the high. time. It's literally the high is 90 degrees today. Fuck. It's hot. It's, it's <sighs> not, it's past warm. It's just, yes, hot. it's hot. It's hot. It's just, it's, 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 it's like living in a mouth. That's how I always described being in Louisiana. Yes. It was just like, ugh. I'm very happy to be somewhere where we have seasons. I know. I want that so bad, but my fiance is like, anywhere it snows, not going. Look, St. Louis is about, it's as far north as I've ever been. And so, like, we get a couple mm-hmm. days of snow, but there's never, like, snow drifts on the side of the road. Yeah. And so, like, it'll I hold, totally like, we'll have snow for a that. week, you know, but, yeah. like, it's, you're never trapped. Like, you know, friends yeah. up in Montana and shit like that, they get 90 inches of snow. Like, no thanks. I'm not. Montana is nice, though. It is very, very cool. I'm a big fan. I haven't been there yet, but okay. that's on my list. What do you what do you think about on the backside of uh, of lifting? I know that that's not the the easiest thing to think about while you're kind of in the hunt on it, but like, I mean, I know that what requirements come out of life to pursue this, but also the the nice thing is knowing that there's a there is a backside to it that you get the freedom back. Yeah. So I mean, I I don't know if it's like my anxiety that makes me this way, but I've always been like, I need to be prepared. Like if I get hurt tomorrow, all my sponsors drop me and I like can't do, can't compete another day. Like I need to be prepared for that to happen at any time. Um, so I've been a full-time student this whole time. I'll start my <sighs> master's. Well, I was going to start my master's in January, but okay. we just bought a house. Yeah, all right. So, that seems <laughs> so like a better plan push it a little bit sure Um, but so like i could get a job with my college degrees like what are are your degrees in uh sport and exercise science and kinesiology like slash they're like the same thing um but that like mixed with my experience as coach athlete gives me a good like foot into any strength and conditioning door that i wanted yep so that's like backup plan (laughs) Point five. <laughs> um, sure. I, I mean, like my fiance always says, like, you don't need to go to school. You could live off of your social media, your sponsors, whatever. But I, that's not secure enough for me. Like that. All right. So this, this is something I've been thinking as well. I mean, luckily I've, I've, I've got a business and got other stuff that isn't just me being paid for being Matt Vincent on social media, right? Like that to me feels really not sustainable and stresses me out a lot because then I'm depending on someone else. Mm -hmm. Um, You're depending on if people like you, which. Yeah. Real weird. And at some point, maybe I don't want to be liked. (laughs) You know, like maybe I'm ready to be done. So that's why like the brand and business has done its thing. And then the podcast I like to do. Um, Mm -hmm. But man, the other stuff, and I think about it is, is, you know, kind of that fear of like, what if this does get turned off? And then look, the reality of that is, is it's, it's not their eyes are valuable and have always been valuable. And if you have eyes and a demographic of eyes, they're valuable. Yeah. They, they will always be. Yeah. And because that's the shift we've now made with advertising that, I mean, can you imagine having a company and deciding like you wanted to advertise on cable TV now? Fuck, no. like, fuck why would you do that? <laughs> no. I don't know anyone with TV, no. you know, like I, I'm maybe the sixties and 70 year olds. Like if dude, anytime I'm in a hotel and turn a TV on the commercials hurt me so bad. Yes. It's just prescription meds and insurance. <laughs> Literally. That's all that's it is. It. And then the side effects, the 45 minutes of side effects worth of each, each commercial <laughs> for a, uh, like, uh, do you have mild headaches sometimes? <laughs> and then it's like side effects could <laughs> be suicidal thoughts, hating your family quit eating more eating it's essentially like everything or the ones that are like did you or someone you know die because you took this medication we can help you it's like well if i'm dead no you can't right (laughs) right you could you make me feel better it's Yeah. yeah it's very odd right and like i just with all of that man i really hope that we start being more proactive on taking care of ourselves instead of the reactionary side of like, 
well, there's a drug to take, right? Like the fact that we advertise medicine or a product to the general population that they can't go purchase without approval from a doctor is crazy. Yeah. I like, agree. I just can't imagine like if I had to sell shirts and be like, Oh, but you need to go talk to your doctor first. Yeah. And then they send me an order. <laughs> and then you get a sheet of all the possible bad things that could happen. Oh, bad. Just, it's it's, so it's incredible. It's incredible that that's where our country has landed on how it, it takes care of itself. I hate it. I hate it. So like, I feel so strongly about that because like, I, I don't know if my mom cares that I share her information, but she sure. has an autoimmune disorder. Mm -hmm. she, it, she was like 50 and still had like six pack was like high school wrestling coach, like just a jacked, like middle-aged lady. Yeah. And then it really started getting worse and she had to start taking a ton of medication had to take medical leave, hasn't been able to work since, is on a fuck ton of shit. And like, I swear the side effects from those medications are worse than the disease itself. Mm. And like, it, it's, it's cause it's like some of the things like joint pain, whatever, just a little bit of movement could help instead right. of having to sit all day long. But the medication side effects make you too nauseous to move, which makes this worse. So then you have to take this and it's- And like, you have to take something for the nausea. Yeah. So I'm honest, she found um, medical marijuana, which is legal here. Hell yeah. And she's been doing that. And I think it's I, like, I think that's just the most amazing alternative if it works for whatever your, your issue is. Well, and look, and I'm, I'm one who's like, I'm for anything that's going to enhance the way I feel, think, or perform. Yeah. And as long as it, if the rules in my life, like I'm not competing in anything that's drug tested. I'm not stepping over any lines, I guess, yeah. moral lines that some other person has, and I don't give a shit. But, like, why wouldn't I try these yeah. things? Like, if I could have nootropics or things that help me think and process and, and learn better, like, why wouldn't I take those things? Why, why wouldn't I treat my food as a performance enhancer on the fuel side? Like, that's the biggest one we all fuck up. Yeah. Long term is that just being able to look at that as – of course it has more of an impact than we give it than anyone tries to give it credit for. Like that's what all the fuel that makes all your cells work comes from what you eat. Yeah. And you're just giving it mud. <laughs> like that's yeah, literally. terrible. Like whatever is quickest, easiest and like comes in a little package. It's a bummer, man. It's a bummer, but it really is. It's just, I'm just curious to see is will the U S flip and go that way? And one of the concerns I have is that there's this split as we already have of haves and have nots. And we have all these different left and right political issues in the country. And I, I really think one of the ones that we're going to see become more of a thing is those who have and don't have our health, especially on avoidable conditions. Yeah. You know, and so, <clears throat> I mean, does that stem into you know, different insurance companies open up to work with healthier people to whatever they define that as. And I don't have to pay premiums that pay for people who don't take care of themselves. Yeah. I, I don't know, but I also don't think that's the craziest idea I could think of for going forward. No, like, I agree. I mean, <clears throat> that would be hard to, for them to define in like a realistic and fair way. That's, that's a tricky bit, right? So, I mean, yeah. blood work, like as long as hormone levels come back good. Um, I mean, I, I, I would like to see some type of physical test. Oh, uh, yeah. But, but that's, again, it's such a crapshoot. Look, I'll, I'll have to let someone smarter figure out. I'm not trying to run an insurance company. <laughs> yeah. Well, because then, then there's like the economic differences. Like someone who doesn't have any money, works a shit job, can't afford good food. Like I know that's they a, left with. And, and, and that's something that I really do see is that, that kind of split, right? Of mm -hmm. I get, I get how both sides could keep you in that side. Yeah. You know, whereas, <clears throat> you know, people like us, for example, if we're, you know, training hard and we're healthy, plus we are, I don't know, selling that style of a lifestyle. Uh, Weird. I, I have food that shows up to my house that also coincides with my goals that I don't have to pay for. Yeah. You know, there's, there's these other things that kind of now makes it easier for me to stay on this side of that line. Yeah. Whereas if you're on the other side and 
fuck, you know, like you've, you've now lost a job. You have a couple kids, you're trying to figure out food period. And man, I get the idea that you look at volume of food over quality of food. And that's, that's, that's a tough one to sell to kids. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I specifically remember being at the grocery store one time and like checking out and having like five or six ribeyes, some pistachios and I don't know, maybe some avocados or some veggies. <clears throat> and like my checkout was like 75 bucks, not insane, but a bunch of steaks. And the lady in front of me had two full baskets of bullshit, just chips and frozen food and, you know, chick like fried frozen chicken fingers and chips and soda. And she checked out for like $103. And I'm like, man, she got two carts full for, you know, 25% more than I paid for this handful of shit that I'm going home with. But nutritional value, I bet I win. Yeah. And like, how do, how do we re-explain that to I people? I don't know. Because people, I feel like, will always pay for convenience over like having to cook anything or, or anything that takes any more effort than the bare minimum they're going to stay away from. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, I mean, but there's, there's so many meal prep companies that we also still choose shitty. Yeah. Because it's, That's it's true. there. And like, maybe I'm so far removed that I don't understand the idea of like, what do you mean? You don't know how that's not healthy for you. Oh, God. Right. Yeah. Like perfect. So you, you talking about your mom, I was, I was talking to my mom as well and I've worked pretty hard to educate and kind of get her on point. Um, yeah. you know, health wise, just like fucking little things. And, uh, so one, I'm trying to get her away from sugar. And so, you know, she's like, oh, things have been better with sugar. I'm like, well, do you have an idea of how much sugar you intake during the day? Just, just start there. And she's like, well, I've cut down a lot. And so mostly it's still with like sweet tea is her, her thing being in Louisiana. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I keep, I keep my sugar around a cup a day. I'm like, you have an additional cup of white sugar that you pour into a thing <laughs> every day. Oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, no, that's not doing great. <laughs> it's like, yeah. that's, that's not it. I just can't well, like, imagine. Some, I, I think I, I definitely take it for granted that I was raised like this is healthy food is fuel. That is yeah. the whole purpose. And like, like we weren't allowed to have like pop tarts or sugary cereal or anything like that in the house until we were like old enough to buy it ourselves. But like so many people, like, why, why is my pop tart breakfast bad? Why is my seven hundred calorie coffee? frosty thing bad, so bad. It's like, <laughs> yeah, 900 I, don't, calories. I don't know how to explain this to you if you don't understand yeah. I, I think just as an average person like a simple rule is like don't drink any calories yeah just they have water or zero calorie things I'll, I'll, look i'll deal with the consequences of zero calorie things as long as we can just start there <laughs> yeah like i know the amount of like white monsters and shit i drink can't be good but there's zero calorie and I haven't felt a negative side effect from them, so <laughs> who knows? We'll Maybe these are actually the ticket forward. <laughs> <laughs> so other than work stuff, like what, what are you excited to be able to actually pursue with more free time? Like travel or? Honestly, and every time that like I think about this, I feel a little guilty, but I don't like traveling. Like I'm so <laughs> much happier being home with a solid routine. Like there's select places in the world that I still want to see, yeah. but I've seen a lot already with like weightlifting and, and being able to travel. So like, I mean, <laughs> honestly, if I could have my way after weightlifting, I would work for NASA, um, which is what okay. I want to go forward with my master's with to help basically develop better exercise protocols in zero gravity so we can go further into space that's like oh, yeah end goal now um, you got my attention yeah Talking that space is, stuff I'm, I'm in space stuff is my shit and like i'm I've, so stoked on space stuff yeah so that's what i was going to uh, get to continue my master's in kinesiology um and from there i mean it would mostly just be research and i would 
do a ton of research work and maybe one day end up on a better solution or like a tiny little percentage better or a little tweak in the equipment that they use, something sure. along those lines, just to be able to get the body to basically survive just a little bit longer. Yeah, it's got to be such a weird stress, the zero gravity thing, like as far as bone density or anything else. Like I know that they try to work on exercise stuff, but there's no really good way to fake gravity. I know that we can do centripetal force while in orbit, but Mm -hmm. so at least from what I understand, deep space travel, since it's traveling in a line and you're not in orbit, I don't think you're weightless the whole time. Because there, if you're traveling, yeah, I think it's because, so you're, I believe if I'm correct, you're only weightless in orbit because of okay. the way that physics works. Yeah. So there's never a point that if you were to fly away from earth in a straight line that you would completely be away from gravity because you would just be into whatever the next big thing's gravity is. That makes sense. Right. So it's not so no the way, gravity, it's low gravity. Yes. Um, so when you're in orbit like this, the way no gravity works is the same way it works like on the vomit comet, like the plane that you can go in because mm-hmm. it does the parabolic uh, arcs. Mm-hmm. Because you're traveling around Earth this way at I don't know, something like 18,000 miles an hour. Earth is curved, so it's falling away from you at the same speed that you're, tr- that you're falling toward it, but horizontal. Mm-hmm. So you're always missing earth the whole time. And so you're essentially falling. Yeah. And, and that's why in orbit, there's no gravity is because you're falling. That makes sense. Yeah. So when you're going in a straight line, there should be some. Yeah. I mean, I know probably less than like normal people even at this point, because I haven't gotten to get into that yet. I had to get like the basic degree. <laughs> over <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, for me, I'm just fascinated in trying to make sense of it like uh, if I was explaining it to a five-year-old, which my comprehension of most <laughs> space physics yeah. would, would have to be delivered in crayon to me. It's not like I understand anything past that. Yeah, yeah but, I'm about the same. Yeah, I just I, know that I don't really want to go to Mars. There's nothing there. No, but I think it's important that we're we have the capabilities. I think that matters too. I agree with you. Um, It's the first people that go to Mars are not coming back. I can agree. Unless they, unless the like space freezing sleep deep, whatever becomes a thing or is a thing. I don't know. I don't think it's possible. It's, it's one thing that we shot a thing at Mars with people in it that hit Mars and landed. We, we've proved we can do that with robots. Yeah. We don't even need the crew inside to do anything. Just live. Yeah. But we can control it all from here. But getting back, that's complicated because there's nothing on Mars. There's no fuel. There's no, <laughs> there's no launch pad. There's no structure. There's no buildings. There's no environment. There's no <laughs> climate. There's a ton of problems. So... Well- also, though, like, I don't know if I, me personally, if I want people to be able to go build on Mars and, and mm. be able to sustain, whether it's like in a bubble or in some sort of like s- structure where you can make it livable, do we want to put the, our human race that is damaging everything on a perfectly unharmed planet? I don't know how I, I feel about that. I, I agree with you. We I don't think the answer to the damage we've done to Earth is start on Mars. Like yeah. that's that's not the solution. No, fuck However, if the concerns of a species are simply to propagate the species mm-hmm. so that it doesn't ever go extinct, that is the only goal of a species. Us being on two planets raises our chance of not being extinct by a lot. Yes. So that means a comet or something like that could hit Earth, and we still have people. Yeah. So well, it's, like, it's just such like a tough thing, because we know how, how we are. I would hope that in 
hundreds of years if we're still here or there or just living anywhere we're smarter and we're not going to immediately destroy everything in our path but also i mean we're greedy humans (laughs) we are and 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 i agree with you right I'm, i'm fascinated to think about like where earth will be not in the 50 hundred year timeline, but where are we in 5,000? Yeah. Right. Cause if we look back 10,000 years and we're looking at dig sites or archeology span or any of this, like we've seen technology come and go that we don't have a grasp on anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so in another 5,000 or 10,000 years of exponential technology growth, I, I'd have to at least assume that we didn't blow ourselves up if we're yeah. still around in 10,000 years. So that's a plus. Yeah, we we've, we've figured that part out to go like, Oh, we're all people. Yeah. <laughs> we can yeah. stop yelling at each other. <laughs> like, yes. uh, man, there was, there was some little thing I heard the other day that kind of just, as far as like racism and cultures and all those type of things, that was just like a, a click, right? Is if you are going to med school to learn to be a brain surgeon, there's only one type of brain you have to learn how to work on. <laughs> Like there's yeah. not a black brain. There's not a white brain. There's not a, an Asian brain. Like they're all the same. They're homo sapiens. That's what they look like. And they operate the same way. And so like that to me, I was like, of course we're fucking the same. Why are we so mad at people about the difference in melanin in their skin? That's fucking crazy. <laughs> oh, it's so stupid. <laughs> but it's, then, it's like ridiculous. Uh, everyone is so greedy and so selfish. Like, we, I wouldn't be mad. Well, I would be mad because I'd be dead. But if we just like started over. <laughs> yeah. Long. Well, the thing is, Earth, Earth tends to do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, historically, every whether, whether that is major war, which we may be out of the woods on just because we fight differently now because of technology. Um, yeah. Plagues, which tend to wipe out a subset of the population. Um, these are things that have happened kind of on regular checks, like every 70, hundred years on the planet. And we haven't had one in a long time because we're getting better at defending against them, but yeah. they're still comets and they're still giant things in space. that can hit the planet. There's a lot of shit. That could happen. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And like, like I'm stoked that the timeline that I'm on earth really is just a blink of the eye. So the chances that I got hit with something are pretty small. Yeah. <laughs> but earth, but earth will get hit. We need to go see what else is out there. I agree. Figure it out. So then if we do see a comet, whenever it happens, we'll probably be able to see it coming for like fucking 20 years by that point. Okay. So with that. Evacuate. Evacuate. Not even evacuate. Seven billion people. No. Let them all, let them all die. But (laughs) take. That's the quote from the podcast. (laughs) Just completely out of context. (laughs) Maddie Rogers, let them all die. (laughs) No, just take enough to be able to recreate a, some sort of population, some animals, like Noah's Ark, but like little biological like test tube. There has to be a sci-fi thing. show about this already where, where something was called the Ark. That makes sense to me. Like There's the space no show. way that this was an original idea. <laughs> no, but. no. Or, I mean, if we, if we could just ask that mighty creator to say, start things up again on that other planet would be nice. You know, maybe take yeah. the week that it took the first one and get <laughs> things rolling for us would be great. Yeah, help us out a little bit. Instead, we'll have to load all the animals up and bring them across space. I get it. Well, it's like, just bring a little, like a gene. Like I'll take like a, a piece of fur off my cat. Yeah. There. there. We just Pop put it in the cat replicator and boom. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm with you. <laughs> I, I, I'm excited to see where we go with technology. I mean, we can already clone stuff. That's like, scary. Yeah, that's weird. A lot of the, a lot of the new, like the gene editing, that scares the shit out of me. See, and that's a yeah, weird one, right? It's because bad. It's, it's a weird one, but say, what if we could actually, like, to me, that's the way that you eliminate cancer. Well, that was the, the goal from my understanding. Right. But then here come the humans to ruin everything. And it's like, well, we want to build a superhuman instead. So fuck your cancer. Here's we this have superhumans. specimen. Yes. It'd be like the boys. It's terrifying. We get superheroes. Have you, are you watching any of those, uh, those shows or anything? Do you? No, I, I meant to start that one though. The boys is great. And now is you've it? got two seasons of it. Yeah. Okay. And especially being, 
influencey side of things in your life. Um, as much as I despise this word, I despise it because I was a goddamn athlete. <laughs> I never, I never set out to just hawk fucking fit tea. I'm, I'm, you know, I just, I happened to have an audience because of a thing I did at one point. <laughs> um, but fuck, such a weird world. It, it'd be really weird if I was a kid and that was what I wanted to be. An influencer? Right. Cause I mean, that exists. Yeah. Yeah, well, I saw literally a screenshot. It was like a, a kid, like in kindergarten. It's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they wrote YouTuber. So that I don't have a problem with because that's a, that's a real job. It is a real job, 100%. That, that is a real job. What I have a problem with is people want fame, but not because they did a thing that's good. Like, it's like, well, yeah, I just would like to be famous for being me. I would like Uh, to be paid for existing. Thank you. Yeah, that's, it's cool. (laughs) It's a a super, super good idea. It is a real tricky one to figure out. (laughs) I mean, make an iconic TikTok dance and you're halfway there. Halfway? (laughs) Until you got to come up with another one or the hundredth iconic TikTok dance, right? Like, it's. It's a fucking weird world to keep plugging away at. So I you would most love to get away from it yeah. entirely. Like that Dude, end life goal. I've definitely figured out better ways to to punch out from it. Um for me, I very much try to treat my phone as a place that I contribute but I don't consume a ton. Yeah. Especially if there's people I follow that their post don't make me smile or provide me something you gotta go oh yeah i don't i'm not interested (laughs) or if there's like a consistent person that's just like commenting negatively or like mean block them they don't exist in my bubble anymore what a fucking bummer that would be to be in that level of i don't know if it's scarcity or insecurity or a combination of everything but what a bummer to get trolled like that like and then what is it uh the you look like a man page has yeah. recently gotten some shit because oh. of calling dudes out. Yeah. Like she's had uh, like two pages get blocked wow. because of, because of she's calling people out. Yeah. And like, you're going after the wrong side of this. Yeah, literally. Like why, why, why are we taking her down a peg for freedom of speech and just reposting awful things that have been said to female athletes, which is look, I'm, I'm glad I'm a, 37, 37 year old dude. Uh, you guys and female athletes operate in a very different fucking world than I have to deal with. It's just like, I don't understand the mindset of let me say this hurtful thing to this person that I don't know, will never know and know nothing about. Well, it's, it's, it's because it's cause you're immune because there is no accountability. So you're, yeah. you're allowed to bully. And we have essentially, th- there was a bar set to become a bully. Like you had to actually be able to defend yourself or be the big goon. Yeah. And now you can just do it from your keyboard and no one can ever call you out. Yeah. And There's the never a risk. Fake pages. So it's not even associated with you as a person. How exhausting is that? How exhausting would it be to make other Instagram accounts, I don't want the ones I have <laughs> to, to make other Instagram accounts to, so that I could read or comment on a person's stuff who clearly doesn't want me to. Yeah. How like, much extra time do you have to have? Man, you can start energy. a business. That's a lot of energy. <laughs> you can start a business. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. It's that type of shit. Such a bummer. It is. Of, you know, it helped me feel good to take this person down a peg because they clearly, if they're doing this, something's cheating. Yeah. <sighs> I, I don't, I don't think I will ever understand. It makes no zero sense to me. We're on, we're on the other side of being people who do things, right? There, there's a difference in the mentality of those of us who want to continually drive forward. And then those of us who don't understand why we're left behind when we're not doing anything. Unhappy people say shitty stuff, man. Hurt people hurt people, right? Yeah. And that that's a tough one. You know, some somebody out there feeling like they're not getting the attention that they deserve 
And that's a part. That's a part of it too. It's just the entitlement that you think you have to anything. Ugh. Entitlement yeah. at all. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, I mean, fuck. I mean, how about, you know, you, that, I mean, how many people look at, you know, you chasing the Olympics and feel like she deserved it or deserves it yeah. when reality no, is there's a number. Anything. No, you don't deserve shit. No, you, you either know? work for it and you make it happen or it doesn't happen. You don't, you aren't owed anything no. just because you put in X amount of hours or your name is this or that. Right. I, I hate that so much. Of course, right? Because look, if you would have implied the same amount of intensity and training and give a shit to say, wanting to be a horse rider. Yeah. That doesn't mean that this was the one that was going to click for you. I, I consider people like us, like we're lucky because yeah. we found the thing that our attention span locked into that also we had some natural capability of doing well. Mm-hmm. And so when those two things line up, it's really fun. Yes. And for sure. I, I think most people don't have a thing. Or, yeah. or their thing is simply just getting through each day. Because they don't like their job. They don't like the place they're in. You know, they wish they were making more money, but don't know how to make a change or take the risk or, or whatever the situations be. Just don't have the resources. But I don't understand turning that outward to yell at other people yeah it's like you have what i want so i need to make you feel bad that's what i have to do to make myself feel better it's just make you feel bad in some way yeah it's a lot and then there's just no negative there's no real recourse for the awful shit they get said to women yeah. i mean fucking there, there was a period of time where like I mean, I had, a, I had a friend who had a page that went up that had her name on it that was essentially, it was rape and kill and then her name. Jesus. And like, yo. Like, where, where else would that be fucking okay? Yeah. Like, like how, I, I don't understand how, like, nothing is that serious where you need to take it to that level. Right. And then the other stuff that gets blocked and somehow this continues to get to like, like we have to report more than once. Yeah. What the fuck? It's a very, it's, very odd system. It um, is. It's crazy. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful for it. It's worked really well for me. I think I'm, I'm using it more than it's using me, which is, which is good. Yeah. Cause it's, it's how it works, right? Like if, if the, if the app or the thing is free, then we're the thing that's being sold. Mm-hmm. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but man, man, it's, it's a very, very strange time. And then, yeah, just everything's a weird, it's been a weird year. Yeah. Like normally I do all these in person. So like actually even doing them this way has become really strange. Yeah. Um, travels way down. For me. Yeah, I'm sure you as well, which is, oh, yeah. has been cool because this is like the most I've been home in probably 10 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like I've probably flown 40 times a year for like the last decade. That's a lot. It is. I'm not, not complaining, but it's been nice yeah. to not. Uh, so what, so what's, what's next? What's the next big qualifier or? Um. So as of right now, there's multiple on the schedule, whether or not they happen. I don't sure. Um, we, well, also if the procedures change, just everything I can say doesn't matter. <laughs> but right. um, Yeah, they just may move the target. Yeah. So we have to compete, like everyone, every country has to compete one more time internationally in order to be eligible. So as of right now, not a single person is eligible for the Olympics in weightlifting. Okay. Um, so, so that's global. Yes. Okay. Um, now the part that's kind of shitty is, is most countries, they take their top, their four and their four or whatever number they're like, okay, we're going to put you in this meet, get you qualified. Then you're done for us. We have to go to a national meet in December, requalify, make sure we keep our spot on the international team so that we can go make sure we keep our spot on the Olympic team. 
So we have to go basically defend ourselves from people that are not in the running, never were in the running, just want to make an international team. Um, and we actually like need, <laughs> we really yeah. need that. Um, so that's December. Um, I, I don't know how I feel because it's supposed to be a very large meet. I don't think yeah. it's safe. I don't think it's time for that, <clears throat> but they're saying it's going. So Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't know really what to feel anymore about. I, I know that I'm less at risk because I'm healthy. I do outdoors things. I, I mean, fuck, we took an eight week road trip and yeah, we, awesome. we did whatever we were asked. We didn't argue. We didn't fight. Look, if it's a private business, I wear a mask. I don't give a shit. It's a private business. You're yeah. allowed to sell your products however you would like to. But if I wasn't required, I'm probably not going to wear one. Yeah. Um, and there's been, there's, I just, if I was susceptible to catching it, I don't know how I avoided it. Yeah. And so I, I'm aware that it's real. I'm aware people get sick and I'm aware people die. But I'm upset that we haven't had more of a discussion that clearly your health has more an effect than defense on the back end. Yeah. You know, I, I wish that we would take more of an offensive role in protecting ourselves from it. Like, yo, like maybe go outside for fucking a walk every day. Yeah. You know, can help. Some some pretty basic things that people in our country aren't gonna do. And even with St. Louis being open a little bit, like we've got restaurants and shit like that kind of going, but everyone's doing this kind of outdoor seating. Mm -hmm. It's going to get cold here. Yeah. So does that now, now those restaurants are fucked again? Yeah. I didn't think about that. Right. Like I didn't either. Like until recently, I was like, holy shit, all this patio stuff's got like a month. Yeah. And then it's going to be no one's hanging out out here. Yeah. So... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We're, I mean, are you like kind of hyper aware of stuff with COVID and trying to really distance and stay healthy and, and avoid people or are you, you feel okay? Um, I, well, I personally think I already had it because okay. I was in Italy when they, their cases exploded. I got oh, shit. really sick. Uh, all the, all the symptoms came home they treated it as the flu, was still sick three weeks later. And they're like, oh, you have a lung infection. Treated it as bronchitis. It, it, I mean, it took almost eight weeks to get. Oh, so yeah, that seems pretty dialed. I mean, that, yeah. that seemed, did you lose sense of smell, sense of taste? Mm -hmm. had How's that? I had, I had a crazy fever, like fever dream. Like it was crazy. <laughs> like I was like, I was literally, that's what it was my first way in too. Was that, it was out of oh, position. And like, I woke up the morning of the way in and I was like literally like I can't, I I'm not competing today and they're like okay let's just get your dead body to the <laughs> scale and I was like ah, ah, ah. I was hacking all over everybody because like oh, no. it wasn't a thing you're a but, super like, spreader well, how lucky people sick. are <laughs> our whole hotel was sick of course everyone it was it was terrible but anyway I yeah. so, so since I had to go through that I know for myself and I'm I would consider myself healthy. I don't want to go through that again. Nope. That and makes I sense. Sure as hell don't want to put anyone who's less healthy than me through that. At risk. Yeah. So I've been super careful. Always wear a mask. Always distance. I trained mostly at home. If I go to the gym, even now, I go when they're closed. Sure. So just been completely by myself. Um, I'm, just, I'm just very aware because even if I didn't have COVID in what was like February, Right. That had to be pretty close to like what it feels like. And that was a miserable experience. Yeah. The only thing I wonder is like in January, uh, Bonnie and I had gone to Costa Rica and I was really sick with the flu on the way down there. Mm -hmm. Like I, for, for three or four days, I, I had a real rough go, but that's about it. Yeah. Um, with that said, I've never been tested for it. Yeah. Well, I got, I did the antibody test in like end of August and they're mm -hmm. like, maybe it'll show up but at this point it's six months after like yeah, it's, been it's too long probably ago. gonna be inconclusive which it was right yeah and they're not sure whether you could catch it again mm -hmm. so i didn't well i just wanted to know so i could be like yeah of course yeah, i had it it sucks wear your fucking masks right or i can't really preach about it if i just had the flu that was just a really shitty flu well 
you still don't want to give people the really shitty flu. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? Like, no. I, I think I think we're going to see some of this carry on for quite a time. I like, I don't I don't think masks are going away in November after the election. I no. think these are kind of I a thing not. that we're going to have for a while. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Even into next year, it's going to be it's going to be very strange. Yeah. I mean, I feel like even like January, February, like travel things are still not really going to be a thing like no. music events that might be like a year off like i cannot see like a music festival or a large concert or anything like that happening anytime soon yeah the, and to me the you know part of the problem is that we've made such a half-ass effort as a country yeah which that, is so shitty right it's 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 either tell us no one's allowed to fucking go outside for the next month mm -hmm. and let's kill this thing or let us fucking go open everything up and have masks. Yeah. And then we try to deal with it. Well, there's just so many like differences of opinions and everyone thinks that their opinion is the absolute most correct and most important. So like, I don't know. No one can listen to anything. No, of course not. And so. I mean, look, part of that is what I think of is I think part of that's just leadership, right? That, that we currently have a, a leader and, and not getting into politics or anything else, but we have a leader that doesn't say I'm sorry mm -hmm. and doesn't admit he was wrong. Mm -hmm. And without doing those two things, you can't correct stuff. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, I see that as kind of a thing that's echoed into a lot of the American public is we're not people who say I'm sorry or that I fucked up. And if you don't say either of those two things, it's really hard to change to make progress. Yeah. I agree completely. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know. Um, and then, yeah, summer, you know. So with that, when when are the games? Mm -hmm. They start in July. Okay. Of next year. So when like will you August. go to Japan? Um, I would assume they would change how they do things because normally we would go like two weeks in advance to get fully acclimated. Sure. Whatever. I feel like they'll definitely shorten that period. Oh, you think it'll go the other, the other way. I think unless there's a mandatory quarantine, which what about, that's a good possibility. What about you personally? I mean, would you, do you want longer or would you want longer to be there to get acclimated or, or show up and go? I would rather have enough time to adjust to the time zone and the time yeah. change. And that's about it because like, I'm, I'm such a homebody. like the longer that I'm away from my home and my routine and like the things that I'm used to, I just get like antsy and stressed. So like I used to skip training camps before worlds all the time. Cause I just didn't want to be away from home that long. Makes but, sense. I mean, for the Olympics, I'm going to do right. whatever's best for my body and my performance. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. <laughs> but we're also not in the Olympic Village. We, I think they literally had a hotel built or something. <laughs> like something insane. That makes sense. So it might be a little bit different. I don't know. Like, just give me a solid like week before I compete. That's plenty of time. And then yeah, it's, the man, out. acclimating to time zones is a tricky one. Like, you have to give a shit to acclimate. Yeah. Like um, as many times as I've been to Iceland and that's only, or Iceland or Scotland, that oh, Scotland's like seven and a half hours from where I'm at. And then Iceland's six. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not too bad. The, the hard part over there is depending on time of the year and how much sunlight you're dealing with. Yeah. But I mean, Japan's a what? 16 hours. I want to say, cause we were there last year. I think it was like 13. Like it's almost like the exact opposite. Okay. So yeah, just completely opposite side of the clock, a 180. Yeah. Oof. Which, yeah. that honestly, like it was rough, but if you time your sleeping on the airplane. You have to. Correctly, yeah. Because we left at like 11 a.m. here, but it was nighttime for them. So you just have to go to sleep. So I like right. stayed up the whole night before, slept the whole long flight, got there, and it was like morning time. Right, so. Night. Yeah, there live the go. day, go to the, yeah, for me, it's always land, I try to go to the gym, yep. and like, break a sweat, and get circadian rhythm going with whatever's there. Yeah. And then, try to skip a nap. Oh, never nap. 
You can't yeah, they'll fuck up because that nap will day. turn into six hours. Yeah. And then you wake up and you're like, oh. I uh, blew it. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea where I'm at anymore and everything's ruined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is for sure, for sure an issue. Um, no, I usually take, um, obviously I have to be like very careful with what I take, but I take like a Costco sleeping pill or sleep mm-hmm. aid or whatever, whatever the Kirkland brand is. Yeah, just melatonin or something like that. Uh, yeah, it has one, I forget what the fuck is in it but that usually will not i take that on the airplane so like they serve us your first meal take that 40 minutes later deep sleep Mm -hmm. and then usually i'll take it the first night and then like cut myself off because the more that you use it yeah of course the less it works my overseas travel during uh my competitive years was a a different cocktail than that (laughs) (laughs) i would oh man and i fucking overshot it a couple times but like it was essentially once i got on the airplane and we were moving i would take it because you can't take it again (laughs) yeah and once you wake up you're up yeah you only get one shot to really fall asleep from it and so there's nothing worse than like falling asleep and waking up and realizing you're still on the runway yeah why why is this why are we here (laughs) fuck yeah um but yeah so like i'd get in my chair and usually get a vodka tonic and then it's Two melatonin, an Ambien, a Benadryl, <laughs> and some something of a muscle relaxer. <laughs> I usually punch out. I'm usually dead to the plane. Like there, I'm just a I'm just a mass of a person that's in the way now. Yeah. I try to pick a window so people don't have to deal with me. Well, the first time I did it, I'd never taken any kind of sleeping pill at yeah. all before. Yeah. So I was like. I was like, okay, I'm going to need to take this like when they start announcing that boarding's happening. No. And so I took it. They like did the first call and I took it and I was like getting on the plane. I was like, I am sleepy. <laughs> and I like had upgraded to first class. So I had like the big things, never been in first class before. And I was like, oh yeah, this is the coolest. And then I didn't know they serve you dinner right away. So I was like, right. literally like one eye open. I was like, Steak. <laughs> I was like That's... trying to eat because I knew I wasn't gonna make it like the thirteen hours without eating. No, no. And then I woke up and smelled breakfast in like ten hours. So. Fuck, that's the best, man. My first time I I upgraded and did the first class thing to Scotland. I'm so stupid because then I couldn't let myself sleep because I felt like I had wasted the money that I'd spent on the upgrade. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like, I need to enjoy every minute of this. Yeah. But with going to Scotland for me, like trying to sleep and get on schedule was critical because. Like I was trying to compete within 24 hours of being on the ground, Oof. but I'm going to be there for three weeks. I'm just going to yeah. like in, in the 20 days that I'm there, I'm going to compete 12 or 14 times. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just a different sport yeah. over there. Um, yeah. Just such a, such a, such a different thing. Well, being such a homebody, what do you, what do you do with most of your time? I mean, cause you train for a period of time. What does, what does a typical day look like? Well, I don't know if it's just me, but my training takes fucking forever. <laughs> like, it takes so long because I do so much, like, warm up and various rehab activation. Yep. Then, mm-hmm. and then I'll start warming. Like, my warm up itself usually takes forty five minutes to an hour, wow. which like I'm almost proud of, but I'm also not proud. Of. Sure, like, sure. No, I, I understand that there's part of you. It's like, fuck, it takes an hour to get this thing moving the right way. Yeah. And then, I mean, I feel good that I do it. Like, I'm glad yeah. that I'm that way. And I'm not just a, all right, empty bar, let's go. But that, that's, that's me. <laughs> I could never, I would literally would feel like I'm breaking in half. I also have a fake knee and my body doesn't work good anymore. So don't take advice on how to warm up over I mean, here. I, I used to do that and I used to like make fun of the people who were like, enjoy it while you can, while you're still young. And mm-hmm. then I turned like literally like 23 and I was like, ow, like this hurts. 23. I remember. Yeah, it's it's good. Fun. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> this machine um, was invincible. <laughs> not, well, I was good. Like 21, 22. Awesome. Nothing hurt. And then like, 23 24 yeah. it's just getting worse every year. No, of course and i'm old enough now that like i'm I'm on the cusp of 40 and then like being on the cusp of 40 is kind of starting to look at 50 and you're like fuck that's scary i gotta try to keep this thing together <laughs> yeah <laughs> we, can't, we can't retire it just yet like we, we have a lot of a lot of moving around to continue to do so yeah, like now all my training is just based on like i'd like to feel better 
Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's the biggest goal. Yeah. That, I mean, that's important though. Cause like, sure you can struggle through a session where every single rep you do hurts, but what, like, what fun is that? First I'm done with that, that dude. Like, sucks. Yeah. No. Well, and also what are you getting from that? Well, if, you know, there's a mentality too, that I, I think gets, gets missed in a lot of strength sports and whether that's anything, look, we, we all went into this with, I think a simple mentality of wanting to know what we can do. Mm-hmm. Like you're interested in knowing what's the most that you can snatch and clean and jerk. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a point that you find that number. <laughs> right. And it's just truth of it. Yeah. Well, fuck. Fortunately, at least you find it. Right. And so yeah, that's true. as long as you don't, kill yourself on the back end with some what if game and you realize and you're honest with yourself that like i fucking gave it man yeah like i poured everything into it and i know that this is what i had yeah that's a cool thing to discover like it's not up for debate you can you can not be happy with what numbers you found with the data but that doesn't change that everything that you thought was doing right to make this your best attempt this is what it yielded yeah which, so, like, I feel like it, being honest with yourself is one thing, but making sure that you have everything in place to give you the best chance to do that is also important because I, like, I just had a major coach switch last year. Mm. And the way that I, well, first just train in general, my training program, but a lot of my mindset surrounding training and competing has done a complete 180. Like if you would have asked me before this change, if I could have snatched and clean and jerked what I did like a few months ago, I'd be like probably maybe on my best day ever one time. But now I'm like, okay, realistically, I I don't even know how many more kilos I have. Right. Like it, it's numbers that I wouldn't have even considered. Yeah, especially now that you've opened the door to this. It's not like you just, it's not like you were on the cusp of a weight class and then decided to stop cutting. Yeah. Like you're putting fucking size on. And so, yeah, it opens everything up differently. And um, that's almost scary because you're like, am I underestimating myself at this point? Like, how am I, is this too big? Is this too small? Like, what is a realistic goal? I don't know. Right. Maybe anything. Yeah, yeah, you don't know, right? Like, you're still trying to find the parameters of it. Yeah. And then the, the trick there is while, while training isn't always linear. No, there's okay. ups and downs and back and forth and then change of weight class. And so like almost, it's not quite going back to square one, but kind of, yeah, it's definitely a different feeling, right? Of, of I knew at this weight class, so things feel new again because what the weight on the bar is never what it was. Yeah. But father time and aging <laughs> are still on the same path the whole time. Yeah. And so you're, you're constantly fighting them too. Yep. You know, and I think as long as an athlete, you don't play that game of like, I might have found this when I was 18 because yeah. I think you found what you needed for you then. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's crazier to think this has to always work than giving yourself the ability to grow and change and go yeah. with what could benefit you more now. Yeah. I agree. And also like, I think a lot, as much as it's like, not great to compare yourself to others i think a lot of people's goals have at least some of that in there it's like well this person did this so i think i could probably do this or that which like is not i'm never one to be like comparison's good but also you kind of you kind of do need it a little bit yeah of course you need a compass yeah you you need somewhere to point the compass is, is the way i look at those type of numbers of like what what gets me in the ballpark yeah and so I know at least I need to get there. Yeah. Um, but I mean, on those days where like, I know that you, I, like, I've always been an athlete that I would rather take third and take a PR mm-hmm. than win and perform shitty because I was around worse competition. Yeah, I agree. You know what I mean? I'd rather hit a PR because I raised myself to a level but didn't win. Yeah. Like, and I'm cool with it. You beat me because you're better than me. I don't, I don't have anything else to tell you. <laughs> like, <laughs> Um, but man, getting beat because I wasn't prepared or I didn't do the work. Mm -mm. That's the worst. That's the worst. And man, weightlifting, I always found really big correlations between weightlifting and throwing because I I find them both to be sub maximal. 
Like, you know, you're never going to clean what you can deadlift or, or vice versa, right? Like, or what you could front squat or I- any of these type of things. Um, but because throwing, like everything we throw is light. I mean, even, yeah. even the heavy thing was 56 pounds. It's not fucking heavy compared to anything we do in the gym. Yeah. And so it's trying to figure out how to apply that max strength to a thing that doesn't weigh max effort and then yeah. figure out how to create enough leverage to pull on it long enough to use it. Yeah. And uh, the days that throwing's good, it's so good. <laughs> and technique lines up and you just have those moments where you get that feeling of like, all I have to do is go faster. Yeah. Right. And like with weightlifting, even the little bit of it I had, I'd get those days. Yeah. I call those the super focus days. Yeah. Those like they literally have a name because you, you, it's just happening and you can like direct your attention to one small thing. Be like, all right, just do a little bit more of this. And it works. It works. And then some days you're like, I'm not convinced that my brain is attached to my body, but somehow like, I'm just going to, just gonna do something oh yeah that's that's the opposite end of that spectrum when weightlifting or throwing or something like that is really good it's the fucking best feeling in the world because it is just step on the gas pedal and it just keeps performing it's like it's like when you cut scissors through wrapping paper (laughs) yes it's just perfect (laughs) meanwhile on days that it's really bad i'm trying to do that with wrapping paper and scissors except the scissors are made of a hammer (laughs) It just works terribly. Like, this might be actually dangerous. <laughs> right. I don't know what's going on. Right. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, shit, dude. That was a little over an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Chatting it up. I imagine we'll, yeah. we'll try to do this again sometime. I, we need to get down to Florida and come come and hang out and come see and make a Florida round. Yeah. So, so we are our, our new house. We have two and a half acres. What? We have a detached garage gym. What? Um we'll have like a, a full studio. Cause like, not that you can see it, but we got shit. We're yeah. going to have some shit. What is, so. so who's, who's doing sound design? Uh, so my fiance, we were mm-hmm. supposed to get married in September. <laughs> Another <but> weird year. <laughs> but, uh, just we'll a lope, just a lope and runoff. That's what we're doing. We're you should. Perfect. In Iceland, but Good work. When are you going? Um, well, I realize that fucks September. up the elope part. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it was, all 100% going to be just us two and our photographer. And mm-hmm. that was the all the plan the whole time, but we just couldn't leave the country. Yeah. So it's next September now because it was supposed Dude, to be right after the Olympics. How long are y'all going to spend over there? 10 days. Cool. Uh, We're before gonna... you go, please let me help. Okay. I've, yeah. I've been like a dozen times now. Okay. And so like, network of friends and people like I can help with, not that you won't be able to, but easy introductions for going to yeah. train at Hapthor's place or any of these other places and kind of hidden cool stuff. Yes. That's what we want because we got, so we wanted, we didn't want to stay in one place the whole time. Yeah. So like, we're going to stay in Vic. If yep. you know. Oh, okay. So you're going to stay with the black sand beaches down there. Well, cause that's, well, that's where we're staying our like the night before we get married because we're going okay. to go up that coast mm-hmm. um, during our elopement. There's a few different locations and we're going to so hike. And go up the coast yeah. toward like um, the Glacier Lagoon yes. around the south? Yes. Okay. That, that's our like elopement day. It's like a full day. There's like four or five different stops. Um, we'll say our vows at some point, whatever. And They're then all the awesome. next day... Yeah, that's, it was hard to pick places. That yeah. was like literally the hardest part. Because Vic's far enough south that you're, you'll be past the two big waterfalls that people normally go see, which is like uh, Skoga cool. Foss and Salonga yeah. Falls. We are going to Skoga Foss. You'll, you'll see both. You, okay. you can't avoid them. Uh, there's one road that goes yeah. south and you're going to be on it and it passes both those waterfalls. Well, because we're like, Vic is here. Skoga Foss was like over here. We're staying right in the middle. So like the day that we get married, we're going to, I think we're going to Skoga Foss first. Okay, cool. And then we'll kind of backtrack. Perfect. We're staying in an Airbnb on a farm with this oh, like nice. nice old man and his cat. Like, oh, I'm so pumped. We're just staying it's, in a bunch of Airbnbs. Have you been before? No. Okay. It's, 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 it's a fantastic place, man. Places. I'm, I'm going to spend a chunk of my life there at some point. Like <sighs> I know it. Um, I've, everyone has said that it's amazing. It, yeah, it feels to me, it, it's something, there's something different there, right? Like, I don't know if there's frequency or vibration to places or whatever it is, but for whatever reason, that one lines up with me. 
And yeah. every time I've ever been there, it feels like home. Yeah. And that's so nice. The people are good. Um, and it oper- like the country operates like a small city because there's only 300,000 people. Yeah. And so there's a difference in the way people act because there's no crime, because there's so much accountability because you can't hide. Like yeah. Everyone knows who you are. They know your parents. They know, you know, everything. And so I, I dig all that. And I really dig just the people have a mindset where like strength seems to be still very respected. Yeah. Because yeah. it fucking takes hard people to live there. It's, yeah. it's a lot. <laughs> and uh, it, it seems amazing. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of good there. There's a lot of good that you'll come home with just mentality wise of being around Icelandic people there. There's that's they're, what we're they're most special, man. about this whole year. Like, yeah, the Olympics got canceled. It's a shit show every year. But when we had to officially cancel our elopement, I was like, how long did y'all ride it out? Like up to the date of like, this could still be fine. <laughs> Literally checked like the updates, the travel updates every week from like June to I think 14 days out. We were like, oh, we have man. to make a call because it wasn't just us. Call, Our photographer right. had to get there too. Like, yeah. I don't ah. think they're letting people in. Nope. Yeah. Only Makes if you sense. have like a European visa passport. And yeah, my buddies. You still have to quarantine. Well, shit, Bonnie and I are going next year. Um, are you familiar with the company uh, Trova Trip? Mm-mm. So they reached out to us, and so they book these big travel trips. And so they reached out to us because they wanted to book one with us. And so essentially, this is what travel agencies seem to have pivoted to in today's day and age where you don't need a travel agent. Yeah. Um, so they've got us going and we're selling a trip to go with us and they fully book everything out. Like I don't have to run the trip. I'm going to be part of it and be on the trip as well, which I'm still that on. similar to like what a lot of the CrossFitters do, like their fitcations or whatever they call I them. I think so. I think so. Sounds so this similar. is through Trova trip. Um, it doesn't seem to be as gym focused. Like, I don't know if we have to go work out, which man, I care. Um, <laughs> I've worked out enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's, it's the, you know, they'll take care of like the buses and transport and the hotel bookings and the flights and all that type of stuff. And so, That's nice. yeah, I mean, we've, I think it'll probably be limited. Like 25 people will go, but yeah. I think my mom's like the people that we've already, oh. you know, wanted to go. My mom wants to go. Her best friend wants to go. You know, Bonnie's yeah. best friend wants to go. I mean, it's going to be fun. Yeah, that'll be really cool. I don't need much of an excuse to go over there. We'll just, no. Bonnie and I will just stay for an additional three weeks after three everyone weeks. else leaves. Yeah, we'll just stay for a wow. month. Wow. That's so fun. See, now that type of travel for me is different. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I grow tired of the travel and touristy shit and like having to go and do and having a schedule. But if, mm-hmm. so typically if I'm over there, I'll stay with a buddy of mine, Hasey. And like, he's got a, you know, a room in a, in a, in a bathroom that are slightly off the house, I I guess, Mm -hmm. downstairs, basement type of thing. And so I've got a door, we can come and go. And and so then that allows us to like go to the grocery store and buy fucking food. Like I want to live in Iceland for a month. I don't want to run myself into the ground trying to see everything. I've seen stuff, (laughs) you know, I've been a lot. That's, that's how I feel. And like hotels. I, I don't like being not being able to prepare my own food. Yeah. I hate having to buy every meal because I'm, I'm like so money conscious. I'm like, I'm spending so much money. I don't need to eat this. Oh, it's for Maddie. You can only spend it for goods and services. That's the only thing you can exchange it for. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, I could get behind a month long, like, home stay somewhere. That would make me feel okay about traveling. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we're going to Iceland to get married because we're like, both of us are kind of traveled out, but we're like, want to see Iceland and we want to see where Lord of the Rings was filmed. Those are the only two places. Left. So you got to go to New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Very yeah, far let's away. Let's just move there. Let's just go there and just stay there forever. Man, New Zealand seems cool. That's yeah. like the other place that when we put out the Trova trip thing that people wanted to go with us. Yeah. So it hopefully if awesome. this goes well, <laughs> we can figure out a way to do a trip like this to New Zealand for the next one. Yeah, that would be cool. Super sick. Bottom of the world. Doesn't make any sense the way down there. <laughs> It seems so chill. Toilets spin the wrong way. Nothing, nothing of this adds up. <laughs> well, shit, let me let you get back to your day. I know that, uh, I know you're busy as we all are. So where can uh, people find all your stuff and uh, all those type um, of things that make 
doing this reason? Well, I'm on Instagram. Yay. As of now, it's Maddie Cakes with five S's, but I can't wait for the day that I change that. Yeah. Uh, I, I made that when I was 15. That's my original Instagram. Handle. Oh, and you're too far in. I'm balls deep now. Oh, you're way too far in to change it. You're stuck. <laughs> I hate it. Because <laughs> people think I my last it. name is Cake. Cake. Oh, man. I have a last name. At least your fucking actual first name is in it. How many, you know how many people I know that I run into and I'm like, I know you really well, but I don't know your actual <laughs> fucking name. <laughs> it's like, I think that I'm you're this. You by your Instagram. <laughs> That's tough. Yeah. Well, there's Maddie Cakes. There is, I have a Twitter, which is like Wild West, a little bit uncensored. <laughs> it's like the Wild West. Uh, I don't know if my sponsors love me there. <laughs> it Whatever. Is what it is. Uh, I started a YouTube channel. Nice. my name. Okay. Uh, still getting a handle on that because I do all like the editing and all that myself. It's, an, it's a weird world. It's a weird world. It's a different group of people too. Yes. Yeah. You would it's think that strange. the carryover from one platform to the other does not really happen. No, not. I expected it to basically be a video only Instagram and it is not that at all. Nope. <laughs> no. It's entirely different. No, people want way more in depth. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they want to watch For me sure. like, day in the life while you go to the bathroom man so there's some of that and for me like my channel's not very big but i only make the stuff i want to make yep that's been the rule that's and like people are that's like do, do a video thinking. talking about your tattoos i was like i'd rather be fucking shot <laughs> yes yeah like, like i didn't get these for you yeah they're none they, of your business they ask a lot they ask yeah. a lot of personal things like Pump yeah, man, I, I went through that, especially, you know, because I'd vlogged for a long time and then with the divorce and stuff like that, like I've got a lot of questions like, where is Ashley? Where, you know, who's what's going on? And I have to address it because at the end of the day, they're not being dicks. Like yeah. the reason they know my ex-wife's name is my fault. I, I'm the one who welcomed her into this world and introduced you all to her. It's not fair for me just to be like, poof, she's gone. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's a. Uh, it is a lot to share. Yeah. But you can still pick and choose. Still like, can pick and choose. Nice. Like, I'm not going to do a 10,000 calorie challenge. I may do a cheat day video because I think the amount I can actually consume is obscene. Yeah. That'd be worth it. Yeah. I just wonder what I'll make food wise. I wonder how much steak I could eat. I don't know. Stay classy could get behind you on that one. It could. I have a day of steak. A meat day, if you will. Meat day. You have a good old fashioned meat day. Yeah, well, shit, man. Look, I'll let, you, I'll let you get to it, and I really, really appreciate it so much. So, All right. This fingers crossed fun. I didn't fuck anything up here on this recording. So, Yeah. All right, let me punch it out.